It looks like the Linus Rare Earth Refinery will be operating in Malaysia for the foreseeable future. Critics have called the refinery a ticking radioactive time bomb. But Linus has maintained that they're completely safe. So is it true or has Linus been lying to us? First, let's understand what rare earth minerals are. They are a set of minerals that are not actually rare since they are relatively plentiful in the earth's crust. But it's rare to find them in economically viable concentrations. When found, rare earth ores are mined from the earth. Then rare earth minerals are extracted from the ore through various chemical processes. This is done in a refinery. There are 17 different rare earth minerals, 15 elements from the lanthanide block, along with scandium and yttrium. Rare earth minerals are used in a lot of modern day electronics, from airplanes, wind turbines, batteries, and computer chips. Modern technology as we know today simply cannot exist without rare earth minerals. Currently, China is the largest exporter of rare earth minerals, holding up to 95% of the market share. Enter Linus. Linus mines its ore in Mount Weld, deep in the outback of Australia, and refines it in Gebeng Pahang. The refinery is known as the Linus Advanced Material Plant and it is the largest refinery outside China and also the cause of a lot of anger here in Malaysia. The main reason for this? The chemical processes used to extract rare earths produce waste, some of which is radioactive. The word radioactive immediately conjures images of Chernobyl and Fukushima. But these are nuclear power plants, unlike Linus, which is a chemical refinery. That's not to say that these concerns are not valid. We just have to take a peek into our backyard to see how badly radioactive waste can impact a community. Asian Rare Earth Sindiran Barhat, a rare earth mineral refinery, started operations in Pera in the early 80s and ended in disaster. Villages nearby complained about breathing difficulties because of the airborne pollutants and at least eight cases of leukemia were confirmed to be linked to the refinery. Following major protests and multiple court cases, it was finally shut down in the early 90s. But cleaning up the radioactive waste took over 20 years. The radioactive waste now lies in an undisclosed disposal facility somewhere in Pera. Now, rare earth minerals themselves are not radioactive, but when mined, they are usually found with radioactive elements like thorium. Both Linus and Asian rare earth ores are laced with thorium. Thorium is a radioactive element. It cannot penetrate to our skin, but it is very dangerous if you consume it into our body. In terms of the content of the thorium in the ore, ARE uh, possess a relatively high in terms of thorium concentration compared to Linus. So, not all radioactive waste is made equal. But since the waste produced is still radioactive, let's take a look at that. There are three types of waste produced by the Linus refinery. Water leach purification residue, WLP, neutralization underflow waste, NUF, and flue gas desulfurization, FGD. Both NUF and FGD have been categorized as scheduled waste, which is toxic waste that is allowed as long as its disposal complies with regulations. It's the WLP that is the cause of concern. Actually, WLP is acid solution that we, uh, they use to transform solid elements into the liquid form before it further purified. It is the residue of this process. It is uh, stored uh, at the backyard of the Linus plant and uh, they built kind of uh, warehouse. Uh, we, they call it as a residual, uh, residual facilities. Uh, it is, it got a roof, but uh, it is uh, open without wall, the warehouse without wall. Maybe we should have done thorough assessments of Linus's plans before it even came to Malaysia. Well, we did. The refinery was assessed by the Department of Environment, the Atomic Energy Licensing Board, and we even brought in a panel of international experts from the International Atomic Energy Agency from the UN. Twice! In its first three years, the refinery was assessed officially at least seven times. And they have passed every time. The new government set up an executive committee to do a thorough review. They released a 200-page report. Seeing as it's the most recent update on all things Linus, let's have a look at that. The refinery is located by the Balok River and two monitoring stations at different parts of the river show that the plant has had a negligible effect on the water quality of the river. The health ministry found that there has been no observable increase in cancer rates since the refinery has been in operation. They also confirmed that based on AELB's data, the radiation levels are too low to cause an impact on nearby residents. The IAEA mentions that a safe radiation level for the general public is 1 mSv per year, which is a unit to measure the absorption of radiation by the human body. While for a radiation worker, it should be capped at 20 millisieverts per year. 
Linus's internal standards are capped at 0.3 millisieverts per year for the public and 6 millisieverts per year for the workers, much lower than even the international standards. And this has not been breached. In the executive committee report, it was found that the radiation dosage to the public was at 0.12 millisievert per year and it was 2 millisievert per year for their workers. But it's not all great. The report notes that in 2016, the radiation impact assessment found that the radiation levels in airborne dust had increased, even if slightly, and this may be because of the WLP residue that is exposed to the air. So we come back to the WLP. In 2011, IAEA in its report recommended the creation of a long-term waste disposal plan for Linus's WLP residue. One of the options on the table was to ship back radioactive waste to Australia. But we knew from day one that Australia has regulations against this. And we went ahead with Linus in spite of this. The other options were to set up a permanent disposal facility or to recycle the waste into usable soil conditioner. Since 2015, Linus has funded feasibility studies to figure out ways to recycle WLP. But the fact remains that from the start, we allowed Linus to set up base without having a long-term plan. Over the past six years, the WLP residue has been stored in a temporary storage facility totaling over 580,000 metric tons. And the NUF, while not classified as radioactive waste, but is toxic waste, has also been in temporary storage. Regulations state that scheduled waste must not exceed 20 metric tons and must not be stored beyond 180 days. The NUF now weighs 1.1 million metric tons and has been in storage for the past six years. What happens in the event of uh, flooding, which happens quite frequently actually if you think about it, the question is that has sufficient risk assessment actually been done to prevent such incidents from happening? Uh, in the event that radioactive elements do seep through into the underground water in, in Kuantan, we could potentially have a similar situation as what, ha as what we had observed in uh, Sungai Kim Kim. So the statistics in, in Sungai Kim Kim and Pasir Gudang is not pretty. Like you have 4,000 people being hospitalized 111 schools you know, being closed, the situation could be worse. What we have observed is that fines and penalties you know, only started ramping up when you know, an incident has, has actually occurred. I think enforcement or, or officers really need to go down on the ground like, to make sure industries that are highly exposed to environmental and social issues that they are you know, properly regulated. So why have we put up with all these risks? According to our Prime Minister, it's because it would make us look unfriendly to foreign investors and that expert studies have shown it's safe. But things are set to change. The AELB recently announced that Linus has been allowed a six-month extension to continue operating in Malaysia. But they have to move their cracking and leaching process out of the country in the next four years. This is the process where WLP is produced. This means that it won't be long before Linus is no longer producing radioactive waste in Malaysia. They also have to put forward a proper plan for a permanent disposal facility for the existing waste. 11 years after Linus first came into the picture, we might be finally striking the right balance between benefiting from being part of the crucial rare earths industry and keeping our people safe from toxic and radioactive waste. But why stop at Linus? Every factory, every industry needs to be held accountable for managing their own waste properly. We need to make sure of that.